Yo, yo, what up, y'all? Tight shirt, Terry Warfield back in the building. I hope you're having a great day so far. Listen, let's just cut to the meat potatoes. Today, we're talking about Instagram Reels. And the reason is because, you know, I've been getting a lot of messages on Instagram and also in person of people asking me, like, yo, you got some tips for IG Reels or how do I do this or how do I do that? So I figured let's make a video about it. Now, these are just my techniques. They've been successful for me. As they always say, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat. You got to remember, even if we give you all of these bullet points to hit, you know, all of these things to do on Instagram Reels, it doesn't mean that if you do those things that your Reels are going to take off. These are just things to put in place to put you in the best position to get those Reels that take off lastly some stuff i post on instagram is just because i want to i don't really care if it does well or not and then there's some stuff that i post you know i actually post it with intent that i really wanted to do well and there's a few extra things i do for those reels which i'll cover in this episode so first thing do me a favor go to my instagram right now add me we got to be friends on there too we just can't be cool on youtube so i'll drop the link right down there sorry for the smoke detector this might as well be a thing in my videos now i need to change the freaking battery but listen the number one thing that you got to remember with reels and also tiktok and stuff like that is consistency they don't really care about photos no more i'm sorry but photographers like instagram has abandoned us right all they care about is reels and to be successful with reels is just like anything else in life you can't just do it one time and expect to explode and pop off and stuff like that. You gotta be consistent. And let's get into some technique stuff. Let's start with shooting. How do you shoot these freaking reels, right? So if you're new to reels, reels are just vertical video on Instagram between 15 and 60 seconds. I will say that if you are planning on taking reels and short form vertical video content serious, it would probably be a good idea to invest in the camera. Phones are great quality and everything nowadays, but they still can't compete with a real camera. So a camera like the ZV-1 or maybe the ZV-E10, which I have videos on both of those. I'll link my last video on the ZV-1 right up there. Um, great cameras, they're small, they're relatively inexpensive, and they will really bring your reels quality to life. So I would do that first. The second thing you wanna do is figure out if you wanna film in landscape which is the side rectangle or vertical rectangle now there's pros and cons to each right if you do horizontal which i do horizontal a lot because i like the cross post so i like to go to twitter and tiktok and facebook etc so in those situations it kind of makes sense for me to not have to shoot the same thing twice i just film the whole thing in landscape mode but there's a trick to it the first thing you got to do is you need to film in your phone cameras whatever the case may be Film in its highest resolution, ideally 4K or higher if you have the capability. And the reason why is because that gives you additional room to move the frame around and all that stuff inside of your editing software, which we're going to touch on some of that also. But film in 4K if you can, and also film it as wide as possible that you can. And the reason, again, is if I film it super narrow, so if I'm super zoomed in on something and I decide I want to move that around, then the subject of my video might be over here and I might not have the room to move it around. So I always say shoot wide if you can, because that gives you a lot of room to recompose and stuff like that. Now, the disadvantage of uh, shooting in horizontal mode is that sometimes you can't actually see the perspective or you can't see the composition how it's intended vertical now if you want to shoot vertical that comes with challenges too one of the disadvantages of vertical is once you shoot a vertical there's no extra room to move the frame around and all of that stuff and also once you go vertical you can't go horizontal but once you go horizontal you can go vertical so just keep that in mind i do like shooting vertical because i have a clear picture of what it's going to look like without having to factor in angles and all of that stuff so there's pros and cons to each figure out whatever style suits you best i've posted plenty of reels that were chopped from a landscape horizontal video they come out just fine the next thing you want to do is shoot in 30 frames a second yo instagram prefers 30 frames a second or less now i'm not saying that you can't post a reel in 60 but i'm just telling you what instagram prefers what they actually have as a guideline is 30 fps or lower now a few little tidbits right i've found that shorter reels tend to work better because you got to remember with short form video content people are literally swiping spending a second or two there and boom on to the next one so ideally you want to be able to capture their attention right up front and i think it's a lot easier to do that with shorter videos it's easier to keep people's attention on a shorter video when it comes to short form video content so that's just something that's worked well for me and also like i said hit them at the beginning here's an example instead of just filming you sitting on a couch right take the extra couple steps to film you sitting on the couch this way and maybe that angle and then maybe this angle and that way you have variety so that you sitting on the couch is just not so boring so if you like me and you want to sometimes post reels that you really want to do well, right? You know, you put the sauce on them, you put the extra work into them. What I like to do is go on Instagram 
and just scroll for a minute. And then I look through the reels that have the little arrow pointing diagonally. It's on the lower left-hand corner of your Instagram Reels page. And what this tells you is that this audio right now is trending. And when you use trending audio, it's not guaranteed, but you have a higher chance of your video getting caught by the algorithm and getting pushed versus not. We'll touch back on that in a second because there's a little bit of trickiness when it comes to that. Yo, so this is what happens when you don't script videos. I totally forgot to tell y'all something. Hold up. So we need to turn on, let me flip this around, high quality uploads go to your instagram page you want to go to account data usage high quality uploads make sure that you do this you don't want to put all that work putting the sauce on the reel just to not upload a high quality video instagram algorithm really loves when people stick around for the first two to three seconds of the video and also when people return to watch the video again and again those are the triggers that tells algorithm like this shit is gold right here and we need to push it to more people now that we got that out the way let's talk about the edit so let's get into final cut pro now this works the same on any software any editing program that you use but first thing you need to do is go to your timeline i'm just gonna start a new one right here and we're gonna set a new project if you use premiere if you use davinci or whatever case the sequence might be different but the basis is the same right vertical for 4k is 2160 by 3840 whether you are filming your content in 1080 or 4k drop it on a 4k timeline now there's theories around this but i believe that if you come into instagram with the highest quality it's gonna compress it, but after compression, there'll be more detail left over versus starting with a lower quality video. Again, that's my theory, there's no proof behind it, but that's typically how it works when it comes to these social networks. So, I like to start with 4K, and we wanna go with, like I said, 29.97 or 30 frames per second, and boom. Now we got a vertical timeline, right? So that's the first thing. Let's talk about music again. Now, if you are like me and you like to edit to music, so you like to grab the cadence of the music, sometimes it gets challenging to edit on a computer and then you go to upload it to reels and the music that you chose don't match up. So what I like to do is I go to my voice memos app on my computer. You can use any voice memos app and I'll go to the reel that has the music I like and I'll let it play through a few times. And that way, I can go to my voice memos, grab that recording, and then drop it on my timeline and then edit my reel to that clip of music so that when I go to upload that reel, it syncs right up with the music. It's a little hack that a lot of y'all don't know about. And here's a perfect example of when I did that. My last reel was just me jump roping working out. Um, and again, I could have just, you know, sat here jumping rope, but I tried to switch it up, bring a couple different angles. And for the music, I know what music I wanted to use, but instead of me going to YouTube and ripping it and stuff like that, I just took a recording of it and then I edited it to the recorded, so all of my cuts synced up with the music. Now remember, you wanna make this as jam-packed as possible, so try to condense everything you got. All of the video clips you want, try to condense it into a very, very small, entertaining, super hype package to keep people's attention. What I'm saying is, is if it doesn't add to the video, throw it out. If you could get the point across of the video without all of the extra stuff, Throw it out. Remember, you want to grab people and keep people for as long as you can. And with short form video content, that's a little difficult. Now, the next thing, if you make reels that have words in them, I always say put the words on the freaking screen. Imagine how many times you've been at work or in a meeting or something like that. You've been on your phone watching something and you know that they're talking, but you can't hear it. You usually scroll past it, but when it's words on the screen, you'll sit there even though you can't hear it and you'll piece together with the words on the screen, how they're matching up with the content that you watch it. So if you can put the freaking words on the screen so that people who cannot listen to it can at least see it and at least they're sticking around and watch the video that tells Instagram, hey, we should push this video to more people now. If you don't know how to do that in Final Cut Pro or whatever software you use, there's a way that you could do it on Instagram. If you go to your reels under stickers, there's an option for captions. Freaking turn that on. What Instagram will do is listen to the words in the video and it'll put them on the screen for you if you don't know how to do it yourself in your edited software. That is something super clutch that a lot of people don't tell you and a lot of people don't think about. And then lastly, I know a lot of times you go on reels and you hear like the Siri voice or like a robotic voice talking over these reels. Did you know that you could add that yourself? If you have an iPhone, all you gotta do is type the message out and tap and you hold on it. It'll read it out for you. And all you need to do is like screen record or record it from your computer and boom, you got the audio that you wanted to put on it. So once you get that done, all you gotta do is 
get it to your phone somehow. If you got a Mac, you could just use AirDrop. If you got a Windows computer, I don't really know what to tell you, but we use AirDrop over here. But once you get it to your phone, then all you got to do is post it. Now, there's one little thing you need to do, especially if you added voice or music to your reel. When you go to add the reel and then you add the music, make sure you press on the music icon because that's going to let you adjust the level of the music and your reel. Why would you need to do that? So let's say you added some words to your video like we just talked about where if you don't adjust the levels from the Instagram crip, not crip, clip, we do not talk that type of stuff in here. It's going to play right over it and you're not even going to hear the voice that you just added to it. So make sure you go in there and adjust the levels. When it comes to your caption, put something short and sweet on there, same thing. Most people on Reels are not about to sit there and read through a paragraph caption, so I try to keep mine as short as possible. And then when you do use tags, you know, they are helpful just like regular Instagram posts, but I don't feel like they're super helpful. So if you do use a few of them, use a few of them. But if not, I don't really think it makes a huge deal if you forget or if you just don't do it. Once you upload it, then it's to the moon. You send that joint off, you wait for the likes and the comments and the views to come in and you move on to the next one. Again, consistency is key. If you do all of these steps and you have a reel that doesn't take off, that's cool. Move on to the next one. And eventually, the more you keep doing this, if you make it a habit to post a reel every day, one of them will pop off for you and start to bring you some much, much needed traffic that, of course, we all want because we're posting a reel. So I hope that this tutorial was some type of helpful for you. Again, I'm not saying that this is the like the holy grail of Instagram reels, but what I do hope is that I have a call coming in. Please hold. Hold on. But what I do hope is that this video was at least helpful to you in some type of way. So I'm about to get out of here. Got to hit the gym. Till next time, I'm out of here. Peace, Chickory Terry Warfield. Peace.